there are many ways to transform the mind in Buddhist teachings. First of all, meditation is one way to transform the mind. Another is loving kindness and compassion. Third is prayer and invocation. And the most powerful is the, the nature mind. In fact, about compassion, I remember uh, when this uh, dialogue between scientists and, and practitioners began early on. It was in Dharamsala. Uh, it was the meeting was focused on actually on destructive emotions. So I was there during that time. It was a small group, about 30 of us, or a little more. And at the end of it, they asked His Holiness to conclude. And he began to say, people often think that compassion is something for others, not for yourself. You think compassion only for others, not for yourself. I think from my little experience, that's a mistaken view. He said, when I practice compassion, when I fill my heart with love and compassion, then completely transform my mind. In fact, I don't know how, how much others benefit, maybe. Maybe from my practice of compassion, maybe 50%, but the real 100% beneficial of your practice of compassion is yourself. When you practice love and compassion, you know, when you invoke that in a deep way, it just transforms your mind. It elevates you. Yeah. Bring the nobility in you. You understand? And such is meditation also with meditation through that. Then the prayer and invocation are really are very effective. As Buddha said, all fear and anxiety come from mind that's untamed, you know. He said, all anxiety and fear, suffering rise from a mind overpowered by delusion and distraction. So there is nothing to fear except your own untamed mind. So this, in this case, we have here these two wonderful images, isn't it? These are the two most Holy, these are for the people the two famous guys in Buddhism. Okay, the most important, you know, ones. Uh, by the way, also one thing that his always, always, Dharam always says in Buddhism and he teaches is that there's, you know, there's a Buddhist religion, but there's Buddhist science, there's Buddhist philosophy, and the Buddhist way of life. What we are teaching is not Buddhist religion not teaching something dogmatic at all. It's more about the science of mind. Buddhism is very much science of mind, a way of life. So this, this is the most holy image of Buddha in the Buddha Gaya. That's the place where Buddha became enlightened, under the Bodhi tree. Over 2,000, I don't know, 600, whatever years ago. And there is this image. Uh, which is perhaps the, the most revered and considered by all Buddhists from all over the world as really the, the Buddha of the Mahabodhi temple. And it's incredible. Also, the, because now it's all painted so much that you can hardly see the image so much, you know. Through, but in the early days, uh, a photographer who was able to... In the early days, there was not very many people around. He could really... That is such an incredible image. I find it so inspiring, this one. And very good object for your meditation. Then there's the other one, which is Guru Bhishan, Which is this one. Guru Bhishan is the one who brought Buddhism to Tibet. And I think uh, the strength and vitality, the extraordinary thing of Tibetan Buddhism owes to Guru Bhishan very much. In fact, his only Dharma often says that I mean, not only he is extraordinary, of course, learned and enlightened, but 
but his main thing is his power. He has incredible power. He was able, Tibet was quite a wild place. There were not only a lot of negative forces. And he was the great Bodhisattva Shantarakchita. He was a compassionate man. Couldn't subjugate. Whatever they are trying to build during the day, negative forces took it down in the evening. Then both King Trisong and Dejan, and they just wept. What, the, what are we going to do? Whereupon the uh, Bodhisattva Shantarakchita, there's a prophecy, this great master, Padmasambhava, is destined. So he was invited. He already knew he has to destined to come. He was already in Nepal. Then he was invited over. And as he came down, he subjugated all the negative forces and transformed them into protectors. So it said that what then men built during the day, the, the, these forces who are now no longer negative forces, they become positive forces, build them more. So he was extremely powerful, Guru Mahesh was extremely powerful, extremely powerful. And also a very powerful master in book, like he is the SOS Buddha. And for me, Guru Mahesh is really my, my, uh, he's my Buddha. And he is actually, as I said, the embodiment and compassion. He's the embodiment of compassion, the blessing of all the Buddhas. And this photograph is an amazing one because there was this image made in Samye, where Guru Mishra in the 8th century, and they, made, they said, the Guru Mishra believed to have said, this looks really looks like me. So when it was completed, he said, this is the same as me, he blessed it. So he left this image like he's represented, the most holy image of Guru Mishra. But unfortunately, I remember as a child, I went with my master, and he gave many teachings in the presence of that with a lot of practice. Uh, but that, unfortunately, during the Cultural Revolution, the image was destroyed. Only thing that survived was a photograph taken by the late Queen Mother of Sikkim. Then she gave me the original negative, which I restored, put to color. So it's a really powerful image. This one, you see, it's incredible. The poise. It's a really wonderful object of practice. It's like the poise, the grace of his way of being is where we should sit in meditation. And the face is really the object of meditation. Like, you know, it's, it's lit up, isn't it? Awake. And the eyes are for Dzogchen practice, nature of mind. Those who practice high teachings of nature of mind. The eyes are the, the gaze is incredible. Even meditation, he lips a little bit apart. As always in meditation, one should keep one's mouth slightly open as if we are about to say, ah. Okay, such an incredible thing. Sorry. So anyway, the main thing is whenever I go through fear or anxiety, which I have, I always, especially sometimes at night, you know, when you fear and anxiety, worry. You know what happens when you worry, especially at night? It becomes worse and worse, isn't it? Then we can't sleep and we think of all the worst scenarios. But actually, scientific research has shown that 85% of all that you worry about doesn't actually work out, which is a good thing, meaning it doesn't happen. 85% of what you worry about doesn't actually happen. So this great master, Shanti Deva, he said, he Dalama lived by this principle, he said, if you can't do something to solve a problem, if you have a problem, if you can't do something to solve a problem, then you no need to worry about it, number one. Whereas if you can't do anything about it, it doesn't help to worry about it either. So in both cases, worry is extra, Tibetan called semne. It's extra. That's why the famous Australian word, no worry, mate, comes from that. <laughs> so, the thing is, therefore, whenever I have worry, anxiety, because normally what we do is we worry, we worry, worry, and that doesn't help. Make you more nervous, make you can't sleep, give you lung problems, and make you, you know, Sometimes it can lead to nervous breakdown, all kinds of things. But instead, if you start invoking, you invoke, you pray. 
I immediately I invoke Guru Mpche because I have a very special connection with Guru Mpche. Whenever difficulty arises, always invoke him. Amazing thing is that it always works. And uh, it's, you know, Buddhism, when you talk about faith, faith is not, the blind faith is not something encouraged. But simple faith is okay. I'll tell you, explain later. Blind faith. Because in Buddhism, what is the faith? Faith is based on reason. So for me, Guru Mbuchi, why do I have faith in him? Because I have direct experience. I have proof. Just as this water, I have complete faith in this water. If I drink this, It will quench my thirst. Is it? The proof. Same manner, whenever I walk Guru Mbache, it completely transforms my mind. It's amazing. When you invoke, because Buddha himself said, whoever invokes me, I am in front of them, granting blessing and empowerment. Same as I've never separate from that. So, whenever moment you, you know, because they make that pledge, Buddhas make that pledge, Buddhas are omniscient, and that moment you invoke them, they know your mind. Sometimes even they know, even they come before you invoke them because they know, already preempt you. So, Whenever I invoke, it's amazing when you invoke Guru Mbuchi, something happens, your, your mind is very worried, okay? But when you invoke then, when you merge your mind with Guru Mbuchi, it's like your mind immerses with Guru Mbuchi, becomes one with Guru it's like something dissolves. Or like when you merge with Guru Mbuchi, I don't know, it's very difficult to explain, but it's an experience where your, all your fear and anxiety actually dissolve. And Yushin Karan Mbuchi used to say, if you put your finger in the water, what happens? It gets wet, isn't it? If you put your finger in the fire, it gets warm or it gets burnt. Same manner, if you put your mind in the mind of the Buddha, like Guru Mbache, your mind becomes a little bit like Guru Mbache, transformed. Really, that's really true. That's why I do believe whenever I have you know, and when you make invocations, that's, you're still seeing something positive. And something amazing happens when you invoke that way. Out was not only my fear and the experience of fear and, you know, the perception of fear not only dissolves, the whole circumstances changes. And afterwards, I have the kind of the courage. I have also the wisdom of discernment. Not only I have no longer the fear I even get the wisdom how to deal with the situation. If you have a problem, how to deal with it. You have the courage to face and deal with that situation. It becomes very practical wisdom comes through. Okay?